I say that like if you're a militant atheist, I'm I'm probably not the person for you. And if you're like a level 700 law of Ra one, <laughs> let's let's have like a you know an hour long conversation about chakras. I'm probably also not the person for you. But if you're like, hey, I'm just trying to figure out my day to day life in the real world, and I need some help doing that, that's that's where I fit in. When it comes to other types of breath work. There are basically 15 different types of breath work. Hey there and welcome to another video. My name is Hugh and in this video I had the pleasure of sitting down with my friend Jake. Jake runs a breathwork studio here in Arizona and I've been going to them for a while now and it's been super helpful to me. And before we get into the interview, I just want to share a couple of my experiences and how this can help you also. Uh, now, when I first started going to breathwork, it was interesting because um, I started shaking a lot and generally when people are shaking like this when they do this type of work. That means they're releasing some emotional traumas that are trapped in the body. And this went on for a good couple months. Uh, and then that finally subsided. Um, and then I felt a lot better. It felt like a lot of emotional baggage was lifted from me. Now in terms of trading, uh, what that helped me with is really solidify uh, my hedging method. So I didn't have a lot of confidence in my hedging method in the past because I didn't think it was a real strategy. Not a whole lot of people talk about it. Not a whole lot of people trade it. Um, but after going to the breathwork sessions, this really helped me, uh, I guess, bring out more of myself. So that really helped me a lot. And uh, I really hope that you at least explore this idea of using breathwork to become a better trader because it really can help you release some of these negative emotions that are holding you back as a trader. So if you're doing things like revenge trading or you think things won't work out or you have this defeatist attitude, um, something like breathwork could help you. So if you are in the Phoenix area, I would highly recommend checking out his classes. Uh, there are online breathwork classes, but I find that in-person classes are much more powerful. Um, if you can't get to Arizona, then I would recommend checking out breathwork in your area. Uh, find a practitioner that you like. I actually went to two or three breathwork sessions before Jake, or actually three sessions, yeah, before Jake, and his was the only one that was really effective for me. So try out a bunch of different stuff and see what works best for you. So with that in mind, here's the interview. Hey Jake, thanks for coming on the show. Great to have you here. Hey Hugh, pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Um, so maybe you could give people a little bit of background about yourself and uh, how you got started with breathwork. Okay, sure thing. Um, so I do not have the traditional background of somebody who came into breathwork. Uh, I've basically been in business to business marketing and sales for the last 30 plus years. And at a certain point, um, I, I just felt like the effort that I was expending versus what I was giving back wasn't matching up, that I was working way too hard and getting way too few results. I was still getting good results in life. This isn't one of those I was like, down on my luck and sleeping behind a dumpster stories. It's more like, you know, Hey, I am working really damn hard and <clears throat> I feel like I should have a lot more to show for it than I do. Um, so that took me on a journey to like try to figure it out. And part of that journey led me towards uh, breath work and breath work really helped me open up in my life, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and allow me to connect with my authentic self. And then once I did that, I was able to see the results of my work that, that like where I thought I was capable and where, where the results started showing up, those started lining up with each other. And I, I had a much deeper connection in also aspects of my life, not just financially, but, uh, in my relationships and everywhere else as well. And, um, in the process of doing breath work, the majority of the people that do breath work are uh, what we call woo woo, the granola crowd. They're they're fruits, nates, and flakes. Um, <laughs> so I, I call those the granola people, and I am <laughs> I definitely don't have that kind of background. Like when you start talking a bunch of supernatural woo woo stuff, I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't want to hear that part. Like <laughs> let's <clears throat> let's get to the part that works. Um, yeah. So that's what I was really focused on. Not to say that I haven't had miraculous experiences. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I don't think I can, nor can anyone else, conjure miracles on demand. Doesn't mean that they don't happen. It's just they, they happen when they happen. Um, so that was my, in, in do, going through that breathwork experience, I was like, well, I'm a normal person who's having these incredible experiences with breathwork. I think other people would like to have these experiences as well. They probably just 
don't want to hang out with somebody named Moonbeam uh, <laughs> t- to do it. Yeah, and have uh, the all white dress code, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> like hey, we don't we don't have to. You can do this without making it weird. Um, so that's what <laughs> led me on this journey. Uh, I ended up doing like maybe fifteen or twenty different certification training programs, trying to look for what I what resonated with me mm-hmm. and uh, none of them did. Like there was always <laughs> something where I was like, all right, you got most of the way there. And then like the last 20% here, you kind of went off the rails. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, I imagine that's how Scientologists feel. Like the first couple there's they go through, it's like, ah, oh, this is all super normal stuff. That's about like performing at life. And then you get to the end and you're like, yep, we've been invaded by aliens. And you're like, <laughs> okay, you lost, you lost me on that one. Lost me um, so yeah. And so I've just tried to remain consistent all the way throughout. So I ended up coming up with my own um, style, my own blend of breath work and just trying to make it as practical for real life application as possible. And that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of how we got here. Cool. Yeah. I certainly, I certainly appreciate that. Um, I'm all about like what works and not necessarily like getting into superfluous stuff that doesn't, you know, have to apply to actually it working. So Definitely appreciate mm-hmm. that. Uh, maybe you could tell people about your first uh, breathwork session and or your most, um, you know, impactful, uh, your okay. first impactful one. Well, um, it's it's funny you mentioned that. So the the first time that I went to a breathwork experience, it was with a holotropic uh, breathwork facilitator. And uh, my partner and I, Kim, we both went. I took my son. I had high hopes. And during, you know, it was a two hour breath work uh, experience and I felt nothing. I basically just laid there, listened to some loud music and was like, like uh, there, I I thought there was nothing here and there's in fact nothing here. Uh, I just, (laughs) I just had a nothing experience. And then it probably took a year and another friend who was, uh, her boyfriend was a breathwork facilitator. And she's like, you got to do breathwork with this guy. And I was like, mm, I've done breathwork. And it was, it was not that great. Like mm-hmm. if, if I just want to have take a little nap and, you know, listen to some loud music, I can do that at home. <clears throat> but she finally convinced slash nagged me into going. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm grateful that she did because it was, it was a completely different experience. It was, um, you know, when people talk about a mystical experience, it it was a it was a peak experience that when you're like standing in the mountains, standing in the ocean, when you're at a concert and all of a sudden the the crowd sinks up and moves as one, it was that type of peak experience in my life uh, where I just received a lot of information, uh, got a lot of insights, um, had a lot of emotional releases. That it was a very powerful experience for me, um, and it did take me a little while to like kind of figure it out, sort it out and, and piece it together. But it was truly incredible. And I think one of the big differences, like the, the difference between the first facilitator and the second facilitator is the first guy was used to working with people who are spiritually sensitive, mm. which I'm not, I'm not a spiritually sensitive person. Mm-hmm. And the second guy was used to working with people who this is their first time. They've never done anything like this before. And he's used to walking them through the basics or the remedial steps of what it takes for that experience to take place. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful to him for that, that like he, he started that process and that's really where I excel because I'm not a spiritually sensitive person is working with people who are like, Hey man, um, it's, it's wonderful. You're talking to me about my, you know, my solar plus a chakra and it being blocked. But you know, when my kid's having a meltdown tomorrow, how's this going to help me? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when my boss is being a jerk and I need to enforce my boundaries, like, you know, talking about my throat chakra isn't, isn't going to do a whole (laughs) lot. So I was grateful for that aspect of it. Um, And then being able to go on the journey from there and and learn and explore more and then take it even deeper. Mm. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a good comparison, I guess, to maybe could bring that up, comparing it to other types of breath work. I mean, for me personally, I, I did a holotropic session and I was kind of like you. I mean, I, I got that floaty feeling and, you know, it was nice and all that, but it was kind of akin to like a nice nap. Right. And uh, other people were like, you know, going off into the universe or whatever. But um, uh, but yeah, when I did the first session with you guys, like I really felt a lot of things release and it was just, you know, uh, I don't know. I was, I was floating after the session and I had to go eat some meat because I was like way too out there. 
Uh, but uh, so maybe you could talk about like, you know, comparing maybe some of the breathwork modalities compared to yours and not necessarily one is better than the other, but, you know, mm -hmm. figure out what works for the individual, right? Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of different modalities that work, um, you know, in my mind, they all work for somebody. Uh, mm -hmm. That I'm, I, I I say that like if you're a militant atheist, I'm I'm probably not the person for you. And if you're like a level 700 law of Ra one, <laughs> let's let's have like a you know an hour long conversation about chakras. I'm probably also not the person for you. But if you're like, hey, I'm just trying to figure out my day to day life in the real world, and I need some help doing that. That's that's where I fit in. When it comes to other types of breath work. There are basically 15 different types of breath work and they all, they all have a different focus. Um, I think Wim Hof is probably the most popular of the breath work styles. Mm -hmm. His style of breath work is very physical. It has a very physical embodied response that you're going to feel it more in your body than you are in your mind or your, or your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, and because that's one of the reasons they do the ice baths afterwards so that you can notice that there's been a physical change. <clears throat> and it's it's pretty awesome if you've ever taken an ice bath after Wim Hof you're you don't feel like you're dying mm. whereas if you do don't do Wim Hof and jump into an ice bath there's definitely a shock to your system where you know for me I do that 20 to 30 second panic breathing where it's like <laughs> 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 which is <clears throat> you know when you're trying to act like a tough guy is not the best look um so Wim, Wim Hof is incredibly powerful uh it's a great system it works on you physically. Wim has the belief that um, if you physic, if you attend to the physical body, that your mental and emotional will automatically correct itself. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the opposite of that. That if you fix the mental and emotional, that a lot of your physical maladies will will relieve themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying he's wrong, but I certainly haven't experienced it that way. Uh, that I've done, I've attended to things physically and, and the chronic issues keep coming back. Uh, that said, he has incredible results. He has incredible feats. Um, and it's, a, it's a really good program. Anybody who's done Wim Hof that then comes and does our breath work, they always have an incredible experience because it does, it gives them the physical apparatus to be able to do breath work more easily. Mm -hmm. uh, holotropic breath work. Um, so there's a whole 12 or 13 different types of, of breath work that do circular breathing or conscious connected breathing, which is what we're part of. Uh, so holotropic was invented by Stan Groff. Uh, he did about 4,000 LSD uh, therapy sessions with people where he would give them LSD and then do psychotherapy analysis with them. <clears throat> and he noticed at the end of his sessions that everybody had a very particular breathing pattern that everybody had the same breathing pattern at the end. And when they outlawed uh, doing LSD uh, therapy, he was like, eh, what do I do now? Like I've been doing this for 10 to 15 years. It seems to be working pretty well. And based off of people's breathing patterns, he had them start breathing that way. And he could get the same kind of effects from breath work that he was getting from his LSD therapy. Uh, a big part of his is uh, he likes to focus on the perinatal birth matrix, which he believes most of the trauma in your life uh, took place before you were born. And that there's a lot of being born trauma that you need to work through that like there's the Garden of Eden where you're just a placenta floating around and everything's taken care of and life's fine. And then once you start being born that <clears throat> you're basically being choked to death uh, the entire time you're being born, that it creates all this trauma that it has to be worked through. And there may be some validity to that, um, but I think it is difficult to get a mass audience to accept that point of view. Um, and then when he does breath work, there's one person who's breathing, one person who's sitting. Uh, they're three hours long, and then you do uh, art afterwards to help you integrate. Um, again, beautiful sessions. Didn't do much for me. Didn't go very deeply for you. Uh, I think there's a lot of benefit to it. Uh, I think there's tr tremendous benefit from it. Uh, I think it'd be difficult to do on a daily basis. It really does lend itself to a uh, a weekend seminar type mm -hmm. event. But if you just want to do it, hey, I want to do this every week and upgrade my life. It's a little difficult to, to implement. Uh, and then most of the other ones focus on a very narrow aspect of intentions. They either focus on rebirthing or, or dying or the ego death, or they have a very specific intention 
um, that they're trying to walk you through as part of their breath work. Um, so the breathing mechanism itself is very similar, uh, but how they set it up, the the space that they hold for it, and how they want you to implement that to your life is is very narrow. Uh, I'd say those are the big differences. And then there's um, some of the other breath works really focus on, you know, you have box breathing, which is four seconds in, four second hold, four second out, four second hold. So it's four sides of a box. Uh, that's very good for people who are trying to um, regulate their nervous system. They're maybe a little overstressed. Uh, it doesn't... I almost all of these breathwork systems that I'm talking about, I did them for 90 days every day to try and find, like I was trying to find out oh, what worked. Yeah. I was like, if if I do this 90 days every day and there's no difference in my life, like that, you, you have to have results. You yeah. know, if you do a diet every day, if you, if you follow a diet perfectly for 90 days and like you get to the end and there's no difference, you're like, all right, well, that, that didn't work. Um, so that's basically what I did. And box breathing, I, I think it has very narrow applications, but it's not a life changer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's different types of breath work that you can do to help you sleep better. Andrew Wheel's really big on that. Uh, I think it's like seven, five, eight breath, uh, something along those lines. So there are different, you know, one of the things that we talk about is how you breathe is how you live. That if you have deep, full breaths, you'll have a deep, full life. If you have shallow, quick breaths, you're going to have a shallow, quick life. Um, that your posture, it is easier to change your mood by changing your posture and your breath than it is to change your breath or to change your, your emotional state mm -hmm. that, um, if you, you know, sit up, take a big breath, you're automatically more relaxed. Um, that, that how you breathe will have a direct effect on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that's interesting that you mentioned the different types of breath work. I didn't know that. And uh, I, I always, I'm always a little suspicious if somebody's like trying to get you into one modality or telling you where that that's where all of your traumas are, mm -hmm. because um, I think it can go across the spectrum, right? Uh, so, uh, so, so, I, so I guess, yeah. One point, one point on that, real quick, that you you touched base around right there, and I found this out early on in my experience was that <clears throat> there is no one path. Mm -hmm. um, there is one destination. I do believe mm -hmm. that, that there is one, there is one mountaintop. And what I realized really quickly, a friend and I started this experience at the same time and it would be like, we were on a journey and I'd go, Hey, there's this landmark over on the left. And he'd say, no, that landmark's on the right. And then we would argue about it. <laughs> and both of our feelings would get hurt because we're like, no, I can clearly see the landmarks over there. And if we use the analogy of climbing the mountain, He's on the north side of the mountain climbing up, and I'm on the south side of the mountain climbing up. Mm. We're both looking at the same landmark from different positions. So, like, wherever you're starting from, that's where you're starting from. I don't need you to go, hey, I need you to walk halfway around the mountain to my <laughs> position so that we can walk up this mountain from this one path that I've found. All the paths will take you there. So there's a lot of other things that are, you know, you can do drum circles, you can do chanting, you can do different things and they all, they all work to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just about which one is easiest for you and which one resonates with you most easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I thought maybe you could take us through like a typical session, you Okay. Know, like what's the, cool. what's the tour? What's, what do people expect in a session? when they walk in. So uh, we we have breath work both in person and uh, online. Uh, I think the in person is is most effective, but people do have pretty good results uh, with our online breath work as well. But if you come to in person, we have a studio in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, you walk in, you're greeted, uh, we check you in, we've got a place you can check your shoot, sh uh, shoes in, we handle you a sheet so that you can put it over a mat, uh, we have a first class experience there, it's not like you're going to lay down on a yoga mat for two hours, which is what I did the first couple of times, we have full blown mattresses there with sheets, pillows, blankets, we give you a sheet to put over uh, your mattress to cover that, select your location, <clears throat> we have uh, an incredible sound system there that, that, um, basically is designed to make the floor and the air vibrate so that when you're doing breath work, you're feeling the vibration of the music. And then once we get started, we give a quick 10-minute uh, introduction, explain a little bit about breath work, a little bit about what you're going to experience. 
we ask you to set an intention and an intention is a desire for your life or a dream for your life, <clears throat> how you'd like your life to be tomorrow that it isn't today. Like if you could wave a magic wand during breath work and something magical will happen tomorrow, what would that be? So we ask you to set an intention around that. And then we go around the room, share your name, share your intentions. And we get started with breath work. Uh, I guide you through breath work for about 20 minutes. And the guiding is we go through a couple of relaxation exercises just to help you relax and spread out. And then I take you through several different types of breath work that you can do. And what I'm doing there is trying to help you find the style of breath work that is easiest for you. Uh, that I have a co-facilitator, Kim. And uh, I like to Kim. Kim is the little hummingbird of the organization. She just zooms and zooms all over the place. I'm more like a bear where I just kind of lumber around a little bit slower. And when Kim is guiding breath work, it is. And that's because that's how fast Kim breathes. <laughs> yeah. And then when I guide breath work, it's more like. Because that's how I breathe. Now, your breath might be somewhere in between those two. So I'm trying to take you through both extremes. So you can find out what's most comfortable for you. And we're doing that in the first 20 minutes, like, hey, try this and try this and try this and see which one is easiest for you. Which one do you enjoy? And then once you find the one you enjoy, it's like, all right, well, let's just keep doing that. Um, and then at a certain point, I stop talking. And uh, it's intentional. That I would say that's one of the huge differences between our breath work and other breath works is that uh, most people who facilitate breath work think that they are the star of the show and there is it's kind of like am radio there's not going to be any point at which they stop talking during your breathwork experience yeah. i am trying to stop talking as quickly as i can because if i'm talking that means you're in your conscious mind you have to think to me think you have to interpret you have to understand and then either act or not act on that uh, i'm trying to get you to that place where it's like a dad with his hand on the back seat of the bike the sooner i can let go of that bike the better both of us are. Um, so I'll stop talking and you'll just continue on your journey. Generally about 10 minutes after that, people experience a shift of some sort. Either their body starts to vibrate or their mind goes to a different place. Uh, it can be very emotional. It can be very thoughtful. Um, it can be very physical. Uh, people can have deep physical sensations. And then you'll just keep breathing for about another hour, hour and a half. And then Kim will come by and she's got a scent that she puts on her hands called Agua de Florida. She puts it on her forehead, cheeks, neck. And it's just a refreshing scent that allows you to uh, relax from the breath work for a moment. Uh, it can also cause emotional releases. It can be grounding. Um, it can be enjoyable. It, it can be tough. Um, but it, it usually there's a little shift that takes place there. And then after that, Sometimes we offer uh, hoppe, which is a snuff from South America made from the or original tobacco plant called uh, mapacho or uh, nicotina rustica. And it's ground up into a powder. We blow that into your nose. It's entirely optional. You don't have to do that. And it, um, it, it makes the breathwork experience more powerful, that whatever you've been going through, uh, it accentuates that and makes it a more powerful experience. Then about 30 minutes after that, we'll call you back. Uh, we'll end the breath work portion of it. And we'll have a small sharing circle where you get to share like what you felt, what you saw, what you gathered from breath work. And sometimes people don't experience anything. Like it, it happens to me as well. I will say that about 149 out of 150 people that come and do breath work with us uh, have some sort of, med at the very least, a very deeply meditative experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's... Cool. That's what we do. And the, the people who don't have an experience usually are, uh, they're usually either on Adderall, which we, oh. we don't recommend that, that, yeah. that definitely cuts down on, on your ability to uh, meditate. And uh, then I'd say the other uh, people who are on the spectrum seem mm. to have a difficult time. And then the third group of people who have difficult experiences are uh, people who have control issues, uh, people who are hyper controllers. Mm -hmm. uh, what those of us who are not controllers call control freaks, uh, you know, if we're being judgy about it, <laughs> yeah. which, which for sure we're not. Um, <laughs> but the people who are hyper controllers, usually their first experience, it may be difficult for them to have a dropped in experience. Mm -hmm. Um, usually after they go the first one, if they come back the second time, because they've 
kind of taking a peek through the door, they can have a second one. The Adderall people, is if they stop taking the Adderall, they can drop him. And the, uh, the people on the spectrum, I just, it, it's, a, it's a tough ask uh, yeah. for them to be able not to get Not too much there. you can do with that one, huh? No, not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the hoppy is amazing. I mean, I've never, uh, I haven't seen that anywhere else. Did you, is that something you just put in yourself or was it something you learned somewhere along the line? They do it as a uh, part of ceremonies in South America. Mm -hmm. um, so it is really popular with ayahuasca ceremonies, but there are, there are tribes in South America who do ayahuasca or they do hape before they do ayahuasca. And then there are tribes in South America who just do hape all by itself. That's the only medicinal plant that they use. Yeah. Um, so once I discovered it, it was, it was a pretty rough discovery for me. It took me a while. Uh, as a friend said, I had a respect, but not a fondness for hopping. Uh, <laughs> so once I developed um, a fondness for it and what it could do, uh, I thought it would be, I thought it'd be a powerful addition to offer with the breath work. I don't think that as, as far as I know, we're the only dedicated in-person breath work studio in the country. And then we're probably the only ones who are offering hoppe with breath work as well. Mm, amazing yeah. very cool so uh what happens if somebody has to use the bathroom in the middle of a session that is a good question um they have the ability to get up that when they open their eyes they are um they're basically conscious sometimes we joke that they they can walk like baby deers a little bit yeah. uh that we we joke we call it the new feet syndrome like eh, new feet just got these ones installed <laughs> Fig figured it out um but usually they can they can get up and go to the restroom uh quite easily um our studio is dimly lit during the experience but we do have led candles all over the place so that the little pathways are lit so they they know where to walk okay cool what's what's your experience been like with that with that uh hmm. yeah i mean um you mean going to the bathroom or <laughs> yeah having having to use the restroom in the middle of breath work oh i see um yeah sometimes if i'm deep into it like yeah i can stumble around a little bit and it mm -hmm. is a little a little tough to get bearings uh when you're standing up but uh yeah i try to keep the breath going through the whole time mm -hmm. and then just come back to the mat so yeah yeah i know what you're talking about <laughs> Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> I've personally had a breathwork experience where I was laying there and I didn't know I had to use the restroom at the time. But I remember opening my eyes and looking at the ceiling and trying to figure out what the ceiling was mm. like. I was like, <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> it probably took me a couple minutes to go. Oh, I'm a human. I'm on Earth. I'm looking <laughs> at rafters. We're OK. All right. I can do this. We're back. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think that can be part of the process, also, right? Having to use the restroom and kind mm -hmm. of like purge some of the stuff that's coming out, right? Absolutely, absolutely, it is. Yeah, that um, people people express themselves in different ways. Um, it is it, it is not common for these experiences, but it does happen that people can cry, scream, laugh. Uh, we have people get up and dance. Uh, you may need to use the restroom. Oh, among guys, sighing and yawning is really common. Um, mm. That I've had women complain about the guys sighing, and I'm like, you know, it, it, that guy's 40 years old, and this might be the first time in his adult life that he's not felt uh, the entire pressure and responsibility of of carrying the load in his life. Like this is the first time he's put his responsibility down. And how about you give him a little grace and let him sigh about it for a couple minutes and enjoy himself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, used, I, would, I would yawn a lot in the beginning, too. It was kind of weird, mm -hmm. but just one after the other after the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so maybe you could shift gears a little bit into, like, what results have you seen? Maybe, like, uh, experiences helping people with abundance or other types of issues that they have been working on. I would say that, like, all of the net-net result of breath work um that if you come in i think one of the beautiful things about breath work is like if you take up a meditation practice it, it's going to be three years before you see the results of of mm -hmm. meditation like if you're not going to a retreat like if you go to a seven day meditation retreat that's that's going to pop it in pretty quick but if you get up and go hey i'm going to meditate every morning for 20 minutes it's probably three years before you see like 
any noticeable results. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's not a problem of meditation. A lot of that's just a problem of our, of our busy lives. And it, it takes that long to, to slow your mind down and look at it. One of the beautiful things about breath work is after the fir first two hour session, you know, there's no, there's no, that, that may have worked. That may have not worked. I'm not sure. There may have been a difference in my life. Like there was a result. You felt it. Uh, one of the beautiful things for us as facilitators is that there's a three or four day afterglow that takes place after breath work um, where you're not as stressed. You're more in harmony. Everything's a little bit easier. Life seems to flow um, that it's just, it is a more relaxed, more chill life. Um, and so that is one of the things that greatly entertains us is because it is just breathing. Um, people are doing their very best to explain it away that, <laughs> that they're like, it, it couldn't have been the breath work. It had to be, it had to be this, this, uh, supplement that I started taking six weeks ago, <laughs> finally kicked in this week. So for us, it's always entertaining to hear like what story they're going to tell about why their life was so much better for three or four days after breath work. And then it wore off, but for sure it wasn't the breath work. <laughs> so that is, that is entertaining. Um, but what we've seen is people who, people who come once a week for like three months um, have truly life-changing results. Like if you come once, Hey man, you're going to be great for three or four days. Like it is, it is going to level you up. But if you come once a week for, for three months, what it's, what it's really doing for you. And this is across all aspects of your life is it's making you more of who you are, that you're able to achieve your full potential. And I think most of the people walking around are probably at less than 50% of what they're capable of that, uh, what they're, what their true abilities are, are like double what they're doing right now at the very least. Mm -hmm. And it's across all aspects, relationships, time, career, finances. Um, it doesn't matter what it is that once they start putting that effort into them and they are showing up as their authentic self, they're showing up as their best self, um, that, that they start to receive that in their life. And it's not a, you know, I talk about when I started this, you know, I was making a hundred thousand plus dollars a year. I was doing well, but I was also just like white knuckling it every day, all freaking day, man. Like it was just like, I am, I am giving it everything I have to barely keep this level of results. Mm -hmm. And, and now I've probably tripled those results in my life and it takes almost no effort at all. Like when you show up as your authentic self, you don't have, you, you have to try, but you're not really trying, mm. um, that there's a, you know, one of the beautiful things about being in a state of flow, that a state of flow is 100% effort. It's also zero effort mm. that you are at 100% of what you're capable of, but it doesn't feel like it takes any effort. And that's one of the crazy things about flow is like, oh no, you're, you're hundred percent committed. You're a 100% of what you can accomplish or what you can do, but it doesn't feel like it takes any strain on you. And I would say that is what the long-term result is across, like I said, it, hey, if you want more money, you know, be, be yourself. Mm -hmm. you, know, you want better relationships, be yourself. That, that there is a version of you that is just completely magnificent. And when that magnificent version shows up, it gets a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I personally i i had that experience uh doing some energy work and feeling like myself for the first time and that was like a it's a crazy thing like y you've never felt it before kind of but you also mm -hmm. like rediscover it somehow and uh yeah, yeah it's it, it was kind of like the first step in the process for me so i, I totally would get what you're talking about yeah uh so why do you think breath work works like that what do you think like the basic mechanism behind it might be okay so the my theory is, is that breath work is the most reliable method to enter your subconscious hmm. that like almost any i don't, I don't know self-help um 
almost any long-term changes that you're going to make in your life have to come from your subconscious. Uh, and they, like people all the time talk about the elephant and the monkey, that your conscious mind is the monkey sitting on top of an elephant and your subconscious mm -hmm. mind is the elephant that's moving around. And it's only when the elephant decides to cooperate with the monkey that it, that it gets lined up. So I did some math on that um, to figure out because clearly our subconscious is, is much more powerful than our conscious mind. So subconsciously, we are taking in about 11 million bits of information per second across all five of our senses. That's how we gather information. That's how we gather that data is all five senses. Consciously, we're able to process uh, 125 bits of information per second. So there's there's a little there's a little delta there. Yeah. Also, when someone is talking to you, that is 65 bits of information per second, which is why you can't follow two conversations at the same time. Mm. There's a mathematical like you just you like you can almost do it, mm -hmm. but not quite. And the reason is it's like hey, I'm I'm 10 15 bits over my capacity for processing, so my conscious mind can't do it. Mm -hmm. So to put that in perspective, if this were money your sub your conscious mind is is budgeting one dollar and your subconscious mind is budgeting ninety two thousand five hundred dollars and you're like i am going to really 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 focus on this one dollar and that's going to make a difference mm -hmm. and you're like no it's not <laughs> you don't you don't you don't have a chance um so i think what we do when we set our intentions is we are sending a programming signal to our subconscious mind to have it to have it reprogrammed to have it have it uh, set a new parameter for it. So I think what happens over that time is is it's a peak experience that gives you access to your subconscious mind, and that through changing that subconscious or through programming that subconscious and getting those things in alignment that you're in alignment with yourself, which is what allows you to be yourself. The self is that your mind, your heart, your body, your thoughts are all in one, one line. And then, and then it's easy that, that you're in alignment, that if we looked at a car and one tire was clearly turned at 45 degrees, we'd be like, you gotta, you gotta fix that. Uh, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to go anywhere fast, yet people consistently like i want to be rich rich people are evil and scummy and it's like well which one of those is your mind actually going to roll with mm -hmm. like you're not going to allow yourself to be rich if you actually think rich people are terrible so one of those one of those views needs to go either you need to accept that like mm, i'm pretty happy being middle class or <laughs> like i don't know meet some wealthy people are actually terrific people because most of the actual wealthy people i've met are are wonderful generous people mm -hmm. yeah Agreed. most of them not all yeah. def definitely some scumbags out there <laughs> yeah 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 okay cool yeah that makes a lot of sense uh so is there anything we missed do you think you want to talk about or you think is vital to the breathwork experience or anything like that i think that's really i think we've we've covered a lot of it um that you know if you, if you want abundance if you want wealth that if if you are aligned with yourself, it's going to be easy. You know, you're not necessarily going to be Jeff Bezos. Um, just like if you take up a fitness program, you're not going to be Mr. Olympia. Like, like not everybody who lifts weights is going to be Mr. Olympia, but everybody who lifts weights is going to get bigger, is going to get stronger, is going to get better. Everybody who creates that alignment with themselves, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, about wealth, about abundance, about success, that they will, that they'll be able to achieve that more easily and it, it's probably a lot more than they expect. Mm. It's probably a lot higher than they expect, but that, that, that the results that they'll be able to achieve are probably uh, more than they anticipated. I know every time I set a goal and, and I feel like I'm doing great in life, you know, somebody comes along and is like, hey, you know, it'd be great as if you did this. And I'm like, boy, they, I thought I was barely holding on here. Like I've got to <laughs> do, I've got to do, there's, there's an even bigger picture that I need to fulfill now. <laughs> give, give me a minute. Okay, we'll do that too. Yeah, yeah. Always a bigger picture, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. It had, it's had a huge positive impact on my life. So Thanks I uh, really recommend people checking you guys out. And um, where can people find you if they want to get more information or go to a class? 
Okay. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, breath.energy. Uh, there's no .com. That's, that's the whole website. That's our, our company name. And then we're also on all the socials. Uh, it's either Breath Energy, I believe it's Breath Energy Studio on Facebook and uh, Breath Energy HQ on Instagram. Cool. Awesome. Well, check them out, guys. And uh, thanks a lot, Jake. All right. Thanks, you. Really appreciate yeah. it. Good to see you. All information in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not trading or investment advice.